Hello friends, today we are going to discuss about English grammar with reference to types of sentences. This is your teacher, Hirat Gupta, assistant professor in the Department of Basic Science and Humanities. You can contact me at 8972618401 or you can write to me at hirakli.ac at the rate gmail.com. The course titles for this topic are Effective Technical Communication and Business English and Communication and the course codes referring to the course titles are HU101, CEHS301, HMHU501 and MCHU501. So let us start with today's discussion on English grammar with reference to types of sentences. When we say of grammar, it speaks of a lot of things like prepositions, adverbs, interrogatives, nouns, articles, gerunds, adjectives, tenses, but the most important part of any language is the sentence. So we are going to have a discussion on sentences and types of sentences in today's session. Let us try and understand what do we mean by a sentence. Well, we often say a sentence is a collection of words that makes a complete sense. Definitely so, but let us try and understand what else that we have in a sentence. We can say the sentence is the basic unit of any language which expresses a complete thought and it does this by following the grammatical basic rules of syntax. So if I say that the blue mosquito won Nobel Prize for peace, despite the fact that it is a collection of words that ends with a full stop, it does not make a complete sense because it is not following the basic rules of syntax. So a sentence we can if we segregate into several features of a sentence, we can say that a sentence has definitely a group of words and a set of words that is complete in itself. And these set of words typically contain a subject and a predicate. And it is for the purpose of conveying a statement or putting forward a question, an exclamation, or a command. And finally, it consists of a main clause and sometimes one or more number of subordinate clauses. So if we look into a sentence, it means that it has these many features. These five features together make a sentence complete. Now let us try and understand what do we mean by a subject and a predicate. We say that every sentence has a subject and a predicate. So let us now try and understand what do we mean by a subject and a predicate. Every complete sentence consists of two parts. That is a subject and the other being the predicate. So what is a subject? The subject is what or whom the sentence is about. The subject actually speaks about what or who is the sentence speaking about. And the predicate tells us something about the subject. So the fact that if I say Rahul is wearing a red shirt, Rahul happens to be the subject or whom the sentence is about. And the fact that the predicate says is something about the subject. 
So in this sentence, the something is the fact that the subject is wearing a red shirt. It is hence understood that a subject is the noun or the pronoun based part of the sentence and the predicate is the verb based part of the subject that the subject performs. So if I say Rita was walking down the road, the pronoun based subject happens to be Rita and the verb based part of the subject performs is walking down the road. So the subject of the sentence is what or whom the sentence is about. So let us now try to understand predicate a little better. A predicate is a part of a sentence or a clause that tells what the subject is doing or what the subject is. The subject of the sentence is the object, person, animal or thing we are talking about in a sentence. And the predicate of the sentence is what is being said about the subject of the sentence. And it is always a verb which includes is, am, are, has, have, had, was, etc. So in the sentence, the boy was going to school, the subject is the boy. And what the boy is doing happens to be the predicate. So, was going to school happens to be the predicate. Let us see some examples. The cat is sleeping under the sun. In the sentence, the cat is sleeping under the sun. The word cat is the subject as it answers to the question who or what. So if we put forward the question who is sleeping under the sun or what is sleeping under the sun, the answer is the cat. Hence the cat happens to be the subject. The cat happens to be the object about which the sentence speaks. And similarly, what the object is doing happens to be the predicate. So, the clause sleeping under the sun is the predicate as it is dictating what the cat is doing. The same thing happens in the second sentence. He reads the book. So, the subject is he. which happens to be a pronoun and the predicate is reads the book. Since it's still modifying the subject and contains a verb, it serves as the purpose of a predicate. Now let us try to understand the types of sentences. Sentences can be categorized depending upon their format and content into four types. Let us try and understand what these four types are one by one. The first among them happens to be a declarative sentence. What do we mean by a declarative sentence? A declarative sentence tells us something. It gives us certain information and it ends with a full stop. So it is neither an exclamatory sentence nor an interrogative sentence. A very basic example of a declarative sentence is Sid goes to school every day. Now these declarative sentences can again be subdivided into two types. It can be a 
positive declaration a positive declaration is called an affirmative sentence and it can be a negative declaration which is known as a negative sentence the basic difference between a positive and a negative sentence is the negative sentence contains words like no not never etc i will complete the work by today this happens to be a positive sentence because the sentence does not have any negativeness into it on the contrary i shall not do it today or i will not be able to do it today happens to be a negative sentence because the sentence has the negative word like not in the sentence now let us try to understand what do we mean by an interrogative sentence an interrogative sentence ends with a question mark so it interrogates or inquires about something or some matter for example did he stop there will you do the work can you come early to office today all these sentences are inquiring about something once the sentence has this note of inquiry the sentence does not end with a full stop but rather ends with a interrogative sign or a question mark these sentences are called to be interrogative sentences because they ask a question to the listener who is supposed to respond to the question let us now try to understand what do we mean by an exclamatory sentence an exclamatory sentence as the name suggests shows a sense of exclamation or emotion so it actually exhibits a strong feeling or expression of an emotion and has an exclamation mark at the end of the sentence or sometimes it might even be in the middle of the sentence it is important for us to note that an exclamatory sentence need not always end with an exclamation there can be exclamatory phrases as well these phrases serve to make the sentence exclamatory see for example the sentence alas i lost my mobile phone yesterday the fact that the word exclamatory word alas ends with a apos with an exclamation mark makes the entire sentence an exclamatory one similarly if we say hooray we won the match the word hooray which happens to be an exclamatory word brings a tone of exclamation to the entire sentence if you look into the examples that we have the first example is a brilliant example of an exclamatory mark being in the middle of a sentence wow the work is impeccably done while the other two are exclamatory sentences but the exclamation is at the end of the sentence like the car has a flat tire what a shame so all these sentences sometimes happen to have the exclamatory words which is followed by an exclamation sign and in other times it can be an exclamatory sentence in itself
let us now try and understand what do we mean by an imperative sentence. Well, an imperative sentence, as the name suggests, can be an order, a request, a command, or an advice. And an imperative sentence always ends with a full stop. Please maintain silence. Shut the door. Do not drink chilled water. All these sentences are examples of excellent imperative sentences. The sentences actually carry a sense of command or request or order or advice. The difference between a declarative sentence and an imperative sentence is an imperative senses has a sense of strength and power more than that of a declarative sentence. So while a sentence like the sun rises in the east is a declarative sentence, do it now is an excellent example of an imperative sentence. I hope you people have understood what an imperative sentence is and I hope you people have not been confusing yourself between a declarative and an imperative sentence. Let us try and understand what we mean by clauses. Well, a group of words with a meaning is called a clause and a clause is a part of a sentence. So. A sentence can have more than one clause. There are different types of clauses and basically we can segregate them into two parts by saying independent clauses and subordinate or dependent clauses. An independent clause is a clause that brings in the complete meaning all by itself. But a subordinate or a dependent clause is something which contains both subject and the verb but has a clarity of meaning only in relation to the principal clause or the independent clause. The difference between an independent clause are Independent clauses can be a complete sentence or can be a part of a sentence. But subordinate clauses cannot become a complete sentence. A subordinate clause can only be a part of a sentence. So, subordinate clause must begin either a subordinate conjunction like because, why, while, etc. or with a relative pronoun. Let me give you some examples of independent clauses and subordinate clauses. I am going to the store in a little while. We are going to the school in 10 minutes. I am going to the store. We are going to the school. These parts of the sentences are independent and complete within itself. But the next parts of the sentences like in a little while, in 10 minutes is not complete without the first part of the sentence. So an independent clause is that can stand with its own meaning without a support from a subordinate clause. While a subordinate clause cannot have its meaning on its own and is solely dependent on the independent clause to complete its meaning. There are examples like whenever I eat cookies, what happens then? So the sentence is not complete and hence we call these kinds of sentences to be subordinate clauses. 
The sentence could have been, whenever I eat cookies, I feel happy. But until and unless we have the independent clause, we cannot utilize the subordinate clause. Just like, if you call, then what? So the sentence is again not complete. Let us now try to understand simple and compound sentences. A simple sentence consists of only one clause, that is, one subject and one predicate. For example, the boys went to the park, or we like pizza. But in a compound sentence, it consists of two or more independent clauses, and these clauses And these clauses are joined by a coordinating conjunction. For example, the boys went to the park, but they did not go to the zoo. So the co coordinating conjunction here is the but. Similarly, we like pizza, like, and we like pasta. Let us now try to understand complex sentences. A complex sentence has at least one independent clause plus at least one dependent clause. The dependent clause begins with a subordinating conjunction. For example, the boys did not go to the zoo because they went to the park. So the second part of the sentence, which happens to be the supporting clause, begins with a supporting or subordinating conjunction. And the boys did not go to the zoo happens to be the independent clause because it is complete in itself. So a such set of words with no independent clause may be an incomplete sentence or a segment fragment but it cannot play the role of a dependent clause i hope you people have understood the differences between the different types of sentences if there is any confusion you can freely contact me at my official contact number which is 89726-18401 or you can write to me at hirak.aec at the rate gmail.com. Thank you all and have a great day.